Thank you for stopping by Blessing Barbecue. On this video, I'm going to be cooking up four gigantic cowboy cut ribeye steaks. I'm doing this Argentine style, so I'm calling these gaucho steaks. And before I start cooking, I want to introduce you to the latest addition to the family, the Sunterra Pro Series 48-inch Argentine Grill. So yeah, a couple days ago, a big old truck pulled up in front of my house. Christmas came early, they dropped off this grill. And this Argentine grill has been something that you can ask my wife, well, if you had the ability to ask her. This is something I've wanted for a very, very long time. And this one is awesome. Let me show you some of the features. So it measures 48 inches in length. The depth from back to front is 36 inches. It has two independent cooking grates. The total cooking surface is 43 inches in length and 19 and a half inches in width. And each one of these grates independently is about 21 inches long. Now, as you can tell by appearance, the Argentine grill is very similar to Santa Maria grill. There's an exception though, and I honestly believe that this is an improvement. Instead of expanded metal as the cooking surface is the grate, it is basically angle iron. It's a V grate. These are sloped slightly forward, so they're tilting forward just a little bit. So a big percentage of the drippings and, and rendered fat runs down these channels and into these grease traps, which are easily removable. So easy to clean, and that's going to minimize flare ups. So obviously since this cooker has two grates, it needs two wheels so you can raise and lower each of the cooking grates independently. The wheels are 18 inches in diameter. They have the cool touch handles. Simply raise it. The brake here will stop it so it's not going to fall into the coals. If you do want to lower it, let her go. And you can actually get the cooking surface, the grates, about three inches away from the burning coal down below. So this thing is massive. On the shipping label, it said 1,100 pounds. So now a lot of this is the brick. As you can see, the bottom of this is insulated with fire brick. All the walls, all three of these walls are lined with the fire brick. The front has these dampers here, so you're going to get plenty of air in there and it's fueled with either wood or lump charcoal, or both. There are some really, I'm gonna to try to get this on video for you guys next time they fly over. Uh, there's been these World War II uh, warbirds flying, a P-51 Mustang right there. I love that plane. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I really, I, that's my favorite World War II plane. Let me show you the rear Bracero, and this is again something else that separates the this Argentine grill from a Santa Maria. So this big thing on the back here is called a bracero, and it is a removable, by the way. But essentially what this is, it's a large rack. As you can see, it spans the entire length of this cooker, and you can put logs in there. So as the coals below are burning, it'll ignite those logs, and then lumps of burning coal will fall off the logs. I got it. That's a, obviously a Roller One biplane. Cool. Anyway, as those coals are falling, you have this, this charcoal rake here. Open up the door, open up very simply with one hand, and you can rake those coals underneath your food. If you're getting a little bit more heat than you want, you can push them away from the food. So, pretty cool. Pretty cool indeed. Now this cooker is NSF certified, so essentially what that means is it's been certified as safe uh, to be used commercially in the food industry. So restaurants can use this. Um, again, it's food safe, so that's a bonus, right? Now some little features, I mean stainless steel cables, so they're, they're not going to rust through. You got a lot of storage down below, hello, <laughs> a lot of storage down below here. Uh, plenty of room to put, you know, logs, what have you. And again, 36 by 48 inches across. Casters on all four legs, two of the casters lock. This thing is heavy, 
but I can move it easily by myself, wheel it around this, uh, my patio here, no problem. So that's great. So I guess that kind of covers most of the real important items of this. I'm sure I'll think of things as I'm cooking. Um, I also have some really nice accessories that came with it, but I'll be introducing those as I do the cooks. Um, next thing I'm going to do, and I'm going to do it tomorrow, is first of all, show you these gorgeous steaks. Uh, I mean, they're beautiful. We're going to make up an Argentine um, marinade. We're gonna do a red chimichurri. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. Okay, so it is the next morning now. Last night after I shut down all the cameras, I went ahead and did a burn in. I did a first burn on the cooker. It's always a good idea to do that on any cooker you receive. Just, you know, it gets rid of any of those lubricants that may have been kind of left on from the manufacturing process. And then I also started the seasoning process on it. So it was fun. It was fun watching this thing burn for several hours last night. We're going to make a marinade for the steaks now. And these are really beautiful cuts of meat, really thick. This marinade is actually going to enhance the flavors. And I, and I realize on nice big cuts of meat, salt and pepper is all you really need, but this is gonna push it up to another level. So those of you who think this is ruining the meat, you're missing out, I'm sorry. I used to say to my son, you never would have known you liked chocolate unless you tried it. And that kind of is the way it is here. We have so many flavors available. Sometimes you need to experiment and have some fun. And again, this is an Argentine marinade for beef. It's, it's great stuff. I'm gonna kick this off with some garlic, a lot of garlic. I just wanna get this nice and finely minced. Some olive oil, red wine vinegar, equal amounts of coarse ground salt, cumin, ground black pepper, ground New Mexico red chili, and give it a mix. And there we go. Let me show you those steaks. So I have four of these cowboy cut steaks, cowboy cut ribeyes, and check that out. These. <laughs> are averaging at about two pounds a piece, big pieces of meat. And again, a lot of richness here. The acid in this marinade is actually going to help balance the flavors out. This is going to be really good. So I'm simply going to take two, of these two gallon bags, and I'm gonna pop two steaks into each bag. to get about half of this marinade in here. Get some of the solid goodness in there. This is really got a beautiful color. I'm gonna work it around the steaks. I wanna get it up covering everything. Spread off to the side here. Now on these, what I'm going to do, I think it'll be easier actually Plane flying over. It'll also be messier on my hands. But I'm going to cover each side out of the bag, and then put them in the bag. Awesome. These are going to go in the fridge, and about an hour before the cook, I'm going to pull them out, just set them on the counter. Let them rest at room temperature. Let's make that chimichurri sauce. So when most people hear the word chimichurri, they're thinking of a green sauce. Well, we're making an Argentine red chimichurri, which is actually my favorite type of chimichurri sauce. It's really good. And it just goes so fantastic with beef. Some extra virgin olive oil. Some red wine vinegar. I have here garlic. I have a lot of garlic, 12 cloves of garlic. And I put this in the oven about 350 until they turned brown, you know, until they got nice and soft and brown. Take some of that harsh bite out and make it a little sweeter. Some shallot. Now we're gonna add some cilantro. I have a nice bunch of cilantro here. If you don't like cilantro, I know it's a kind of a, either you love or you hate it thing. I would go with a flat leaf, like an Italian parsley. 
Throw that in there. I'm going to get that mash down because this stuff never wants to cooperate once you flip the blender on. Some smoked paprika. Some New Mexico, ground New Mexico chili powder. And on any one of these recipes, either the marinade or this chimichurri, if you want to pump up the heat, a little pinch of cayenne will do it. So right here I have some coarse ground kosher salt, some ground cumin, and some red chili flakes. That looks really, really good. Really good. It's got a nice little bit of heat, some herbaceousness. That's a word, right? Herbaceousness, it herbaceous. It's good. So I'm going to allow this to set. We're gonna pop it in the fridge let everything kind of come together. Those flavors will develop, get really, really, really good. This will be a perfect topping for that steak. So I'll see you guys in a few hours and we're gonna fire up the Argentine. I'll show you how we do that, by the way, and uh, grill up these steaks and grill up some veggies. We're gonna have, a, it's gonna be a full meal. See you guys in a bit. First of all, apologies for this horrible lighting coming down. Mr. Sun's kind of going down in the west sky right now. Um, so I lit up a bunch of lump charcoal underneath the bracero there and I could do this entire cook with just some lump, you know, just like I would any other grill. This isn't any other grill and I've been waiting to use the bracero. I want to burn some splits. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is add a nice chunk of, this is red oak. So what's going to happen now is the lump charcoal is going to ignite, heat up and ignite that red oak, that split, and then nice chunks of just fresh coal, like, a, like campfire coal are going to be falling into the fire here. It's going to just add that amazing flavor that, I mean, lump is amazing, but it isn't as amazing as cooking over wood. We all know that. So we're just going to let this thing do its thing. Kind of redundant there, but anyway. Let fire take its course, get a nice bit of coals. As soon as I have the coal bed I'm looking for, I'm gonna grab that metal rake and kind of rake it underneath the grates, fire up some steaks. That rhymed. All right, so the wood is burning. It's going to continuously, again, drop little pieces of nice hot coal. We're ready to cook. I'm going to go ahead and rake that lump, at least most of the lump underneath the grate. And we're gonna set up for that low and slow portion of this cook. These ribeyes have a really gorgeous color because of that marinade. So for this cook, I'm using the meter block to monitor the temps. Uh, it's, it has four probes, so I'm monitoring each steak. And the cool thing is, it's monitoring the internal temperature of the steak, my target temperature, and, and the ambient temperature, which is going to be the temperature where they're actually cooking right now. So the game plan is I'm going to flip these steaks once they hit 80 degrees internal, 80 degrees Fahrenheit. My target temp is 125. Because these are big, thick steaks. After they hit 125, pull them off, let them rest, and then we'll get this thing cranked up, get that grate lowered, and we're going to sear them off. Um, I'm going to start getting some coals ready under here. Uh, for this cook, I'm going to be cooking corn on the cob and I'm grilling up some big old Mexican onions. Um, 
if you don't know what a Mexican onion is, it's basically like a green onion, but only it's the, the bulb, the onion part is, is bigger and they're great for grilling. They go really good with, you know, Mexican food. So I'm guessing South American food, they'll go great with. Um, so yeah, that'll be, uh, I'll be cooking all that stuff right under here. See you guys in a bit. I always say that. See you guys in a bit. All right, we're about 20 minutes in. These guys are pretty much all at 80 degrees now. They're coming along. I'm going to go ahead and get this bed of lump that I have down below this great lit now so I can get it ready for the uh, corn and the big old onions. Okay, we're in about 10 more minutes after the flip. The smallest of the four steaks, the runt, so to speak, it's ready to pull. It's at 125. It's right here. Look at that. It's beautiful. I got to tell you, this has been a really fun cook for me. I mean, it's just such the epitome of live fire cooking right here. I mean, how more live fire can you get? It's really cool. I'm learning a lot. Um, again, I, I did have to raise the grates. It was getting a little hotter than I wanted it to be for this cook. So raised it up to here and it's just getting this really nice radiant heat. I've been watching the wood, the big chunks drop off and then I'll take that rake and rake them under which has been cool. I mean, this is just really fun. I'm having a blast. See you guys in a bit. So about five minutes later, after I turned off all the cameras, I was getting the alarm for number three steak, which was the second smallest. It's ready to pull. Again, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I'm hoping that the next two will be done at the same time. But anyway, better safe than sorry. See you guys in a bit. All right, one more, and then we just have one to go. And the last steak, a few minutes later, is done. Look at that. As you can see, I have the corn and those onions on. I hit the corn with a mixture. It was olive oil, some garlic, some roasted mashed garlic, some cilantro, and some paprika. It's going to be good. Okay, the steaks have sufficiently rested. Now we're gonna sear these bad boys off. And I am using the, it's a laser cut searing grate. I'm, a, I'm calling it a searing grate. It's a laser cut grate that Sunterra Pro puts out. Excited about this. So the corn, everything's done. Steaks are done. It's smelling magnificent. Um, I'm going to set up a little area to kind of slice these up for you and give you a try. All right, let's eat. Try this out. Don't go anywhere because I also wanted to show you this kind of a cool Argentine salad I made with a little help from my wife. Uh, this smells unbelievable. Tenders all get out. It's nice. This is a tender, tender steak and I'm this awkward reach over it off for the sake of the camera. That is gorgeous. Hang tight. And here we are all sexied up here. Now that chimichurri sauce, that red chimichurri sauce, just drizzle it across. There you go. So here's that salad I made. 
So it's basically very simple, bell peppers, tomato, cilantro. It's got some diced avocado in there, a, kind of a vinaigrette made with olive oil, lime juice. It's got um, some garlic in there, some cilantro, and a little agave. So it's very simple. Let's try this out. Enough chit chat. Mm. For me, this is the perfect dinner. And then I cheapen the meal with a paper towel. This is good. So, cilantro stuck to my teeth. First of all, this grill is awesome. I can't remember the last time I had so much fun cooking on a cooker. I mean, we're living in a time where people are starting to, you know, kind of go away from live fire cooking and they're, you know, and honestly, I don't have, I've said it before, I don't have problems with like, you know, pellet grills and everything. I own a pellet grill. I've owned two other pellet grills. But there's something about this like real primal cooking that just, this is like outdoor cooking. This is awesome. I mean, you're just controlling fire and it's fun. The smells, the, the smells, I, I can only imagine what my neighbors were. Actually, I don't know if I mentioned this. So those other steaks that aren't here right now, I'm taking them, I'm running them across the street to my neighbors that are always helping me with my big freight deliveries. They help me unpack this big old grill. So they're gonna be rewarded with some good steak. Anyway, guys, oh, I'm gonna eat this. Thank you for stopping by as always. Um, if you're not subbed, please consider subbing. Just hit that button, it's free. If you like the video, thumb it up. If you don't, boom, thumb it down, but do it twice. I'll see you in the next video. Keep those requests coming in. Oh, I'm supposed to talk about this. Figaro Mountain, I think I've already drink, had this on a video, but anyway, it's good. Figaro Mountain Brewing Company, and it's Davy Brown, it's a brown ale, and it, it goes very well with beef. Cheers.